Hello, and we say good day to you at this moment of your time. We thank you for allowing us to co-create in this way, and for us to share this transmission with you. We ask, how can we be of service to you today? Hello, very good to be talking to you. And I wanted to ask about travel and transport because I'm actually traveling at the moment. I'm in an airport, slightly more noisy than I know. But I wanted to ask, how do you guys travel? What's your method of traveling and your technology? We have different sorts of technology. Some ships are meant to stay local to a planet, and some are meant to be interplanetary. All ships have some degree of a mode of, you might call hyperspeed, that allows us to accelerate our movement and effectively bend space to move faster. There are also some ships that have a teleportation method that allows us to alter the frequency of the ship and the occupants of the ship in a way that brings us to manifest in a different space and time in the particular dimension and parallel reality of our choosing. Well, this is quite extraordinary. It looks as though some of our science fiction actually had some truth in it. Was science fiction kind of fits in detail? Like things like Star Trek? Predictive programming is inadvertently channeling as those artists and dreamers are attuning themselves to different probable futures. And it just so happens that oftentimes these creators can tap into the future reality to which your Earth is heading. So there is some truth to many of the different ideas presented in science fiction, but it isn't exactly as it's portrayed. It's a bit different, and at the same time, these representations are the best way that these methods and technologies can be presented to you at the time that you receive those transmissions, you could say. Right. Can you say a bit more of this um, bending space and time you talked about? The basics is that, that you consider that you occupy space, Yet, really, space is a variable intrinsic to your own core frequency. And thus, rather than moving through space, you can change the core frequency of matter, and matter will appear in a different space. This, this is so mind-blowing, I can't even think of a sensible question. <laughs> this... <laughs> All right. Um, the trouble is, we are so stuck in our normal ideas of space and time. And it's very hard to get out of these ideas to think in a different way. Is there anything you can say to help a bit with how to imagine this? We would say that Physics and quantum physics are far closer than you might think to getting to some of these ideas and understandings. And experiences like the double slit experience uh, are phenomena that demonstrates how observed particles behave differently than non-observed particles indicates how consciousness also plays a role in physics. And this will also 
lead to other sorts of discoveries that will be equally groundbreaking. Do you know when we will have those groundbreaking uh, breakthroughs in science? Over the next decade, certainly, you will continue to experience exponential growth. It's so incredible, it kind of trips my mind. Um, at one time, you've talked about the consciousness controlling uh, or steering in some way. you say something about that? Yes, there is a level of consciousness that the ships have. You may call it artificial intelligence at this time, but it is not artificial. And thus the ships are sentient and they can be interacted with and they also can scan the balance psychologically and in terms of health of the occupants of the ship. Um, is it true that um, various countries have recovered crashed UFOs and tried to fly them or, or work out what they're doing with them? Correct. And did they, did they manage to fly these at all? It has influenced certain technological trends, some of which have become widespread. I've always felt that the, the iPad, iPhone, must be reverse engineered from UFO technology. Is, is that true? There's an influence there, yes. So the felt bending space and time, what, what, what's the, like going from the future to the past? Yes. Are ETs still going to the past of our planet? Yes. For example, the entire hybrid program involves beings from the future coming to a past. Do they travel in, in craft or do they just kind of beam themselves there? The craft is required, especially for the hybrid beings, in order to maneuver space and time in this way. You don't need to travel at all. You can just kind of view at a remote distance. Is that so? Essentially, yes. If you can pinpoint the correct space and time with technology, which they're capable of doing, it is not so much a movement, but a change in the fundamental frequency and vibration of the ship and its occupants. The idea is so, um, so different from what I'm used to thinking. I think what most people are used to thinking that it, it, it's quite confusing. It's, I'm not sure what, what to ask next. Is, is there anything that comes to your mind that you think you should say more on this topic? As you travel very much from one place to another, you might consider the different frequency of these places and how you yourself become a different person in one place or another. And this leads to the understanding of the fundamental difference in frequency. You are a literal different person in one place versus another place. And this is true in small scales as well. In one part of the room, you experience a different energy and you are at a different frequency than you are at a different place in the room. Much like in order to begin this transmission, you had to find the right place to be, to be at the frequency that would be compatible for having this interaction. That's very true. And, and also, um, you say about frequency. I mean, I would say more, more a state of mind to, to, uh, to prepare for communicating with, with you. But the thing is, I get so overwhelmed with uh, a particular feeling when uh, we're communicating with it. I don't think. I don't think straight. I forget all, all the thoughts and questions. It's a very different... You say frequency. I mean, state of mind might be the word that I would use. Well, the frequency impacts your state of mind, but frequency can impact everything, every part of your being. As, as we're making a podcast, is 
Is the frequency going to affect some of the people who are, who are the audience? Well, absolutely. Every time that we communicate, we're also transmitting our vibration. And this vibration has the most impact when one is having an in-person interaction and one is having a direct interaction with us, speaking to us through the channel. Though also the same transmission of energy can and does take place via a call and even via a recording because our energy is being shared through what we are saying and through the changes that take place in the channel's voice and the channel's embodiment at this time of the transmission. And this all carries our energy and those who are sensitive can tune into us or to their own counterparts in our world while listening to these messages to have a even deeper and clearer connection with us. Okay, I um, I feel we're pretty much complete on this particular uh, topic for today. So thank you very much. All right. All right, yes, yes. We thank you very much as well for co-creating this interaction today with us. On the spaceship of Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five-year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars, a celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you will hear us coming through a whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi as we whisper in the dark Growing old as we speak after the minor with the strangeness of a quark, you can hear us on the phone as we whisper in the dark.